Hey there ladies and gents, welcome back to the vlog. My name is Drew and this is my computer science bag. So a lot of you guys are going back to school, getting started with your CS coursework or just finishing up your computer science coursework. And I thought it'd be really interesting to do a video. I've seen a lot of other YouTubers or programmers making videos about what's in their bag. So I thought I would jump on this. A lot of the stuff that I have in here is actually the same as when I was going through college. And so I think it would be really conducive to a lot of you guys who are starting college or getting into computer science in college. So to kick things off, I guess I should start with the bag itself. So this is actually a messenger bag that I got from Fossil. And I really, really like it because it's got a good overall feel to it. It's very durable. It's gone through about two or three years with just a couple of nicks and scratches here and there. And they actually do free embossing. So if you want to get your initials embossed on your bag, you can do that at any Fossil store out there. On the front here, I actually have two little buttons, one for Parzival and one from Artemis. I actually went and saw Ready Player One uh, on opening night and they were giving out these buttons. So I thought I would just take advantage and I threw them on my bag because they're really cool buttons and I really like the movie Ready Player One. So I went ahead and put those on here. In the back, we actually have a little flap. So if you need to quickly slip like a, a book or some papers in there, you can do that and have quick access to them. And then to get into the actual bag, there are two little latches. There's also a zipper pouch up front here. I hardly ever use it, but it's there if I need it. And to get into the actual bag, there's just two little clasps that you open up and here we are. So going from front to back, I first off have my journal. So this is a journal that I use to write down ideas where I do daily journaling as part of you know, self-care and meditation. I, I always take some time to write about how I'm feeling and write some goals for the day, that sort of thing. So conveniently, it actually says wild ideas on the front and this guy is full of plenty of wild ideas. So that's the first item there. Secondly, I have this, or a couple books here. When I was in computer science school, I actually had my textbooks in here, but now since I don't have to lug around textbooks, I have some light reading. This week I am reading A Beginner's Guide to Losing Your Mind how to be normal, in air quotes, in your 20s with anxiety and depression. Great, great book written by Emily Reynolds. She talks a lot about her experience with anxiety and depression, especially when you're in your 20s. Absolutely, when you're in your 20s, you are, when you're actually in your 20s, there's, I don't know if there's clinical proof of it, but there's some pretty strong evidence to show that kids in their 20s, especially when you're going through college and stuff like that, and you're learning more about yourself and, coming into a sense of self, they show that a lot of the times people in that age bracket are a little bit more susceptible to anxiety and depression, stuff like that. So this is an amazing book if you're in your late teens or your early 20s and you want to learn about anxiety and how we all kind of get through this thing we call life. So there's that guy. And then I also have a little bit of fun fictional reading. I'm a big fan of spy novels. So this is The Night Manager, which was made into a mini series on AMC starring Hugh Laurie and Tom Hiddleston. And it's by Jean Le Carré. I, I don't know what the, uh, the accent on the E is. I think it's Jean Le Carré. So great, great spy writer. A um, little bit dense. I'm only 40 or so pages in, but I like what I'm reading so far. And, and <laughs> kind of an aside about this actual book, it's, it starts out in a hotel. And all I can think of when I read about the hotel is the Grand Budapest Hotel, that Wes Anderson movie with the guy who plays Lord Voldemort, I forget his name, but if you're watching Mr. Lord Voldemort, actor guy, I am so sorry I forgot your name, but I will be putting your name right over here. So a little bit of fictional reading, a little bit of non-fictional self-reflection books, and my journal. So those are some of the tools that I use throughout the day to help me through and kind of takes some time for myself as I'm working on other projects or working on coursework or when I was working on coursework when I was in college. Next, I have this really cool iPad case, and the iPad case obviously has a little flap here, so you can slip your iPad in kind of a folio, but on the front here, there's all these little straps, and so you can actually put stuff in them. So I have my calculator right here, a pair of extra earphones when I don't have my AirPods, a extra charging block, I'll usually have another lightning charging cable here for my phone and my iPad, an eraser, a pencil, because you never know when you're gonna need an actual pencil and an actual eraser, like on exam day. I also keep my Apple Pencil in this little slot. I'm going to put that back now that I think about it. And um, I also have this ruler in there. So if I ever need to do quick designing or drafting either on paper or on my iPad, I can do them there. So 
gonna put this over here. Just gonna slowly start accumulating a pile of stuff here. Next is my project binder. So inside of this binder, when I was in college, I would keep all of my notes and different class stuff and assignments and stuff like that. But now I've actually turned it into my project binder. So all the different projects that I'm working on, I keep notes and random musings about those various projects in here. If you guys want a separate video on how I organize my notes for my projects and stuff that I'm working on, then definitely leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to make a video like that. And then, Lastly, I have my computer. So I have a 15 inch MacBook Pro, late 2015 model, I believe, with a retina display, so nothing fancy. I don't have one of the new USB type C ones, but um, I have a lot of stickers and I just realized there's a fruit sticker stuck on the back here. I'm gonna peel that off really quickly. Alrighty, it's off. So, lots and lots of stickers. I am a big fan of stickers. It's actually a scientifically proven fact that for every sticker you have on your laptop, your programming experience goes up by two points. I'm just kidding. But I have happily covered the front of my computer in stickers that I got at various different things. And I'm also starting on the back. There is a sticker here for standard user cybersecurity. I actually got that at a security uh, users group or meetup here in Dallas. So. I believe Standard User is a security startup here in the Dallas area, so if you're looking for security software, definitely check them out. And I've got some Overwatch stickers, because I'm a big Overwatch fan, a Python sticker, PHP, Google, YouTube, Master Chief, I actually got, no, this is going to be a story about how I got all these stickers. This is Master Chief I got at the Halo 5 launch event, so I stuck that guy on there. And then, it, this is a really fun one, so you can't see because the Overwatch um, logo is actually superimposed, but I'll put a picture of the actual sticker here, but it has P is equal to NP, so it's the P versus NP problem, which is a very infamous question in computer science that is being worked on as we speak, and the notion is P equals NP is kind of this elusive answer, and we're trying to prove it, so I want to believe that P equals NP. It's kind of a computer science joke, and I'm sure some of you guys get it. And then I got some skater trainers because I skateboard, so I have a skater trainer sticker there. And then I have a Revive skateboard, so never quit skateboarding. They sent a sticker with the board. So yeah, this is my computer. I love it to death. This got me through all of my college and now into my professional programming career. So good on you, Apple. They definitely last a, a while. And finally, there are just some little odds and ends here. I usually have food snuck in here somewhere. Oh, this is amazing. I actually don't have any food, but highlighters. Always important if you need to highlight text and stuff like that. I have a couple extra pencils and pens in here. Yeah, here's one I just found. Um, I haven't cleaned out my bag in a while, so this is serving double fold. And I usually take this Rubik's Cube with me, so if I'm ever thinking or ruminating on a, a possible problem or solution, then I'll just stick this in one of the water bottle packs and I'll pull it out and start fidgeting with it as I'm thinking. And it generally helps me think, so that's kind of uh, I have it on my desk here, but when I go, I take it with me. So that's kind of in between the pile of stuff that I have and the stuff that sits on my desk. So yeah. So that is everything in my bag. I realize, I don't know if you call this traveling light, but to me it feels like traveling light because I know a lot of people who have multiple computers and multiple devices in their bags. So compared to that, I'm pretty low maintenance, but I hope that Getting inside of my bag and seeing the stuff that I used in college gives you kind of an idea of what kind of things you would need in college, pursuing a computer science degree, that sort of thing. By no means is this list exhaustive or complete. Obviously, if you just want to get away with just a computer, you can do that. If you prefer to write out your notes, maybe a tablet would work, or maybe you could get a hybrid PC like a Surface Book or a Lenovo Yoga. Do they still make yogas? I haven't checked in a while, but at a time, Lenovo had these yoga books that would flip over and you can write on them as well as be a computer. So those are really nice, especially if you like taking handwritten notes. I know a lot of my friends in college had surfaces and they would write out and diagram stuff as well as type. So it was nice having the option to do both. So that's one big question that you want to think about now that I, I, I go off in this aside. Definitely think about how you take notes. If you are sitting in a lecture, which you'll be doing a lot of in college, how do you like to take notes in those situations? Do you prefer to write out your notes? Do you prefer to type them? Do you prefer to do a little bit of both? And once you realize that question, you'll kind of, that's a good gauge of what kind of technology you'll need to master your computer science lectures and lead to success in college. 
Secondly, the other thing that you'll want to consider is you're a computer science student, or if you're studying computer science, you're a computer science student. And so the first part of that is computer. You do need a computer and no worries. Obviously a lot of computer science programs have open labs that you can go to to work on your homework. So don't feel like a computer is a necessity right away, but it's something you'll definitely want to invest in as you get later into your computer science coursework and into your professional career. So I have my MacBook Pro. It has served me well. It's got 16 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, SSD, great processor. And I think at a bare minimum, 8 gigs is a good bet, so that'll give you enough room to multitask to have your IDE open while you're working on other stuff or working on multiple windows at the same time. And obviously a good processor is good for compile times and if you're doing any sort of higher end work like video editing or gaming, the more processing power the better. So think about that too, think about what you really need out of your computer. If you just need to get by and get your programming done, then you can probably go for a just a basic programming computer, but if you're going to be doing any sort of gaming or high-end, more rigorous stuff, then I would definitely look at something like a MacBook Pro or Asus has some really great gaming laptops. I know a lot of friends who had those in college and Dell makes some really, really great machines too. So, and they also run student deals. So right around this time is when it's a good time to catch deals from Dell. So check them out as well. Needless to say, I hope that this video gave you some perspective and some insight into what I have in my bag and what I used when I was a computer science student and on into my working career as a professional programmer and software engineer. And maybe it helped you to get a little bit of an idea of what you possibly would need in your bag or what works for you and what doesn't. And once you answer those questions, you'll be on the road to success and you'll have everything taken care of from a technology standpoint that will help you succeed in computer science in college. So that's all for today, friends. I really appreciate you tuning in and we will wrap up in the normal way. And that is, I will say, always remember that you are wanted, you are loved, and you are appreciated. You have a special talent that nobody else has, and the world is waiting on you to bring it out. So muster a little courage, go out into the world, and change it. That's what the world's waiting on. You. Hey there, ladies and gents. Thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate you giving me a little bit of time out of your day. If you liked the video, leave a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, leave a thumbs down. I learn just as much from the dislikes as I do from the likes. And if you want to continue the conversation, leave a comment down below. You can talk about just about anything from cat videos on to computer science questions or whatever is weighing on your mind. And if you want to follow me on social media, I've got links to my various social medias. I would love it if we could connect on those platforms and you can keep track of me and what I've been up to outside of the YouTube realm and possibly get a sneak peek into projects that I'm working on before they air here on YouTube. Thank you so much, guys, for watching the video again, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Take it easy.